Hey guys, so we're gonna do some more coding on the logout resolver. We're gonna make it to where you can log in with multiple uh, computers and then log, be able to log them off uh, of all the things, whether they're using their phone or whatnot. Um, they're all gonna be logged off in one, no matter which uh, client does it. So the first thing I wanna do is write a test for this and get it to fail. So I'm gonna call this multiple sessions. And I'm just gonna rename this to single session. So we're going to do an async there and we're going to create two clients and each client is going to uh, represent a computer. So session one and session two. So you can think of this as computer one um, and computer two, or you could think of this as someone's phone and this is someone's computer uh, and we just need to put a comma there. So first things first, we are gonna log in. So session1.login, email, password. And then we're gonna log in on the second computer. Now, if I were to do session.1.me, and I await that, we should be getting the same thing. This is the same person. So we expect that to be equal to await session to dot me. So we expect both of these to be equal because right they're the same person. They're just in two different sessions. Uh, next thing and you know we can just run this if we want to. Um, let's do login. Sorry not login, log out. I guess I didn't actually uh, give this a save. So we'll control C yarn test again and I, I didn't even say this so save our test we'll go ahead and uh, run log out and we should pass this at least this test and then what we're going to do next is I'm going to log out on one of these computers so we'll log out for example on session one and we're going to do the same thing and they should be equal, they should both be null, um, but they're not. So one object is null. This is null because we logged him out, but this guy didn't get logged out, so it's not null. So that is what we're going to be fixing. So let's go ahead and go to our resolver. And uh, how we're doing it right now is we're destroying basically the current session that the user passes in. But really what we need to do is destroy all the sessions of that user but we're not really storing all the sessions for a user. So let's start doing that. So to do that, we create sessions in the login resolver. So what we wanna do is basically every time we create a session for a user is keep track of that. And I wanna keep track of that by uh, storing it in Redis. So here I'm gonna grab access to Redis through our context. And I'm gonna say, redis.push, or not push, lpush. Um, and uh, we can pass a key and a value. Uh, and what lpush does is it will create an array and uh, add one element to it, um, or it will push these elements onto the array if it already exists. And I'm gonna wait that. And the reason why I'm doing this, and I'm gonna create the um, uh, username or the key, if you will, is uh, the user ID, which uh, we basically want to keep uh, the sessions for a user. So I'm going to make the key that. So the key is already going to exist for the user if we've already pushed on some sessions. So we're just going to continue adding on. Uh, if they haven't, we add on that session. Now, how are we going to like differentiate the sessions, right? Well, the sessions have an ID attached to them and they're automatically stored in Redis. And uh, we can access this through the request object. So we can pass a session ID, or we could just pass in the whole request object. That'll probably be easiest, at least for right now. Um, and to be able to access this in our context, we also need to update our type. So GraphQL utils type. Um, and then our context will say rec is equal to express dot request. All right, so then in our login resolver over here, I can access 
the request object. Um, and it looks like, did I just not add it? Nope, I didn't. So that is context. Okay, so we basically have two places here that have context. Let's go ahead and create a type. So export type context. And this should be an interface because it's an object. And we'll replace this type here. Oops, context. And same thing here. Okay. And that should be a comma. And back over to login. So we have request and on request dot and there's a session ID. So I can do an if statement. So if there is a session ID, because sometimes it's undefined. In our case, it really should be uh, always defined, so I don't think we have to worry about it. We're gonna push this on um, into Redis. So what we're gonna be creating is an array of session IDs um, stored by the user ID. So at a given time, if we wanted to, we could search up a user and we could find all the sessions they have open and basically see all the computers um, that are accessing your website at once by just searching uh, Redis for that user ID. Now, the other thing about this is whenever we create a session or Express creates a session for us with Express Session, um, it's storing that data in Redis. So we, to get rid of it, and that's really what we wanna do with Logout, uh, we can access it through Redis directly if we want to and just delete it ourselves. And the way it stores it in Redis is this session ID right here, and it prepends a prefix to it, to that key. And we can actually, um, I looked through the source code of how Express Session works, uh, at least the Redis one, and we can pass in a prefix right here. The default one is session like this, so I'm going to go ahead and pass it here um, to be positive. Uh, and then over here in our, in it, when we have a hard coded string like this that we want to use in multiple places, what I like to usually do is create a file called constants.ts and export it. So export const redis session prefix is equal to sesh. So Redis, oops, Redis session prefix. And I guess it just needs to be imported. So anytime a session is created and stored into Redis, what it will do is create a key that starts with this prefix and then also has that session um, ID here. So what we can do to get those, so I could do redis.get if I wanted to. And I could pass in the session ID and I could pass in the Redis session uh, prefix like that and we'd be able to get the session for a user using those two combinations. Now, what we're gonna do is actually delete that key because we don't want it to exist. Okay, so we have access to this now. What we, we wanna access this through um, the logout resolver. So we'll get this through Redis here and we don't really need to have uh, this stuff anymore. So first thing, we're gonna get the user ID from the session. So we're gonna check if the user ID, because it could be undefined. If it's not, we'll just return false. Um, and then inside of here, what we're gonna do is uh, first get all the session IDs. So session IDs is going to be a wait. Um, and let's make this asynchronous. Um, and normally we would use get to get the key for Redis, but we are getting a list. And to get a list in Redis, we use LRange and we pass in our key, which we just talked about how um, we would get the key for a session. But right here, we're not getting the session. We're getting the sessions for a user, which we said is just the user ID. Um, so we could pass user ID. And I think it'd actually be a good idea to create a prefix for this key as well. So what I think I'll do is I'll say export const user session 
id prefix is equal to user session we'll say yeah user uh, ids sids uh, so user session id prefix and so in our login over here when we push this on we want to actually include that prefix and the reason why we add a prefix is because we might want to use the user id as a key later so user session id prefix so then we want to get this uh, list in our logout so we are going to say user id also we're going to pass in our prefix so user session prefix and then we specify um, the start which we want to get the first element and then the last element so we want to get all elements so we can specify a negative one to get all of them um, and then we want to loop through and uh, delete each session ID so I could just do a for loop so let i is equal to zero i is less than session ids dot length i plus equal one and we could await session ids we're going to get that element and we're going to say redis dot delete and eslint or tslint doesn't like it but i'm just going to remove that and we're just going to return true we were able to delete everything. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and restart the test and uh, we'll see if this works. Uh, I'm thinking it should work. And, uh, oh, though we actually have one small problem. Uh, hopefully it should fail. Delete, we pass in the key. Uh, we forgot to pass in our prefix to this key. So we just have the current session ID. We need to also include the prefix. So prefix, and this is going to be the Redis session prefix. And now I'm thinking uh, it should pass. And real quick, we can just go over the code one more time. So we're first getting the list of all the session IDs based off of the current user. So now we have all the sessions the user has. So that what these sessions represent is them logging on on different devices and then we go through each one and we delete it from redis we delete all data basically stored about them so now if that session tried to uh, come in we would ha have it gone and cool so it went ahead and passed that's awesome um, now i want you guys to take a look at this code there's one thing that can be optimized uh, i want you to just take a look at it it's this bit right here think about what's going wrong so this is a common mistake i see um, when people use await uh, and they make stuff like this uh, synchro uh, not synchronize basically sequentially run um, so we're not deleting all these keys in parallel because we're awaiting for each one to finish so this returns a promise I believe so what we want to do to make this parallel is I can have a array of promises and then I can say promises dot push and then I want to wait for all of them to finish. So I can say await promise.all promises. So now all of these are going to be deleted in parallel. Um, still, and let's rerun that. We should have uh, no difference in the code. It should run the same. But now all these are deleting instead of waiting for the previous key to delete before deleting the next one. So that's it for this. So we're now able to delete the session for a user um, no matter how many devices they're on and this is going to be very helpful we're going to actually abstract this in the future because we're also going to need this for whenever we forget password um, or for a user so that's it for this video guys thanks for watching